Okay, brilliant. It's 12.03. Let's get, get started and, uh, uh, you know, we'll start with introduction. So again, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, uh, depending upon where you joined in from. Uh, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon, we like to think of ourselves as a new age consulting firm. Um, we help innovative ideas grow exponentially. Uh, we're very passionate about um, helping innovative ideas um, grow, of course, across the Middle East region, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, you know, where we have most of our uh, relationships and connections, but of course, across the world. Um, today, uh, you know, we have one such innovative idea, which uh, Dave uh, has been working with us for the last, I think, 18 months to even 24 months now. Um, and he's sort of come up with an innovative idea, which we'd love to, uh, you know, help him communicate to all of you. Um, so we are going to talk a bit about Lean today, how you can implement Lean in your organization, as well as talk a bit about um, Dave's innovative idea and uh, the innovative product that he's come up with. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. I love what he's done with the product and I, and I hope you will all as well. And um, over to you, Dave, uh, for an introduction, and then uh, let's get started. Okay, so I'd like to um, apologize in advance for my um, use of Zoom. So just bear with me. So we will uh, we'll float in and out of different screens. So um, my name's Dave Powell. I'm the MD of Mass Optimal Limited. We've been working in the, basically in the lean management consultancy business since about 1998. Um, my skill set originates from Toyota. I was trained in Japan in 1990, um, and I've worked with quite a lot of the Fortune 500 companies over the years implementing lean, lean systems. So I'll just move on to our presentation. If I can find it, just bear with me. Excuse me. Apologies for this. So can everybody see this now? Uh, you might need to unshare and share again if the PowerPoint is up now. Give me a second, sorry. Okay, can that be seen? Absolutely. As the full screen, yes? Uh, not as a full screen, we can see your notes as well. So, is that better? Yes, that is it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, so, so my um, my partner, Stephen, is, is stuck in traffic at the moment. So, I apologize that he hasn't arrived. So, he's left me to uh, complete this on my own. But, however, we, we will continue. Okay. So, yes. So, First and foremostly, I'm not 100% sure if, I, if all the attendees have a knowledge of what Lean is, Lean Management Systems. So I thought I'd give a very brief overview about Lean, um, where it started and, and the direction it's going. So in essence, Lean was established, in reality, it was part of the Toyota production system. Um, it was focused on, you know, on activities to improve the Toyota operations directly after the Second World War when you know money was tight and um, they struggled to you know to have the the elements in place to allow them to have a successful business so they had to be more efficient to compete against the American car giants with they so with their total focus on were to achieve a safe product yeah at the highest quality at the lowest cost in the shortest possible lead time. So they basically sent out one of their engineers, a guy called Tai Chiono, back in the 1950s to start investigating all different methods and systems throughout the world. And he went out and he visited America and the UK and 
you know, every, everywhere you, you went to see where these options were available for efficient solutions. And he drew them all back in together and he put them into one format and they call that the Toyota production system. So as we progressed, the, the Western world started to hear about how efficient and successful Toyota was. And about the 1980s, and they all started to wonder, hmm, how can we adopt this? So in the 1990s, the term lean was actually introduced. And this came from a book called The Machine That Changed the World. And that was um, written by a couple of guys from MIT in America. And that really coined the phrase lean manufacturing and everybody started to look into ways of adopting their methodologies and implement it. So lean is made up of a series of tools and techniques and methodologies. And in essence, it's built around the, in, in the Toyota lean principles, it's like building a house. So in the lean philosophy, we would have um, the core groundwork, which would be 5S, total productive maintenance, and I'll explain what these are in a moment, and visual margins. Uh, that would be the hardcore when you build a house. Okay, we all see this clearly. However, once you've got them in place, then we can put our foundation block in place, which is what we call standards. And that would be your standard operating procedures. So 5S is a place, there's a method of controlling your workplace organization. So productive maintenance is a way of ensuring that all your equipment, you know, um, um, equipment and machinery is efficient and doing, working to the, you know, direct, you know, requirements to deliver the product on site. And visual management is about creating t um, KPIs and information to allow you to react fast to the abnormalities. Once we've got those three in place, your standard operating procedures become clear and we start to focus on, you know, how do you make everybody work more efficiently to the exact same practices so we get consistent sustainability. So once we've got standards, we can put problem solving methods in place. It's what we call practical problem solving because without standards, you can't problem solve because your first focus, first question in, problems, in problem solving is, what does the standard say? Otherwise, it's very, very difficult. So once we've got this in place, we can then build our walls up. The first one is just in time. And that's about having all your products delivered to you at the right quantity, at the right place, at the right time. And the second one, it's generally a Japanese word, word called Jidoka, but it's basically quality systems. Okay. And to put the roof on this process in the Toyota world and in the lean world now, it's called Kaizen or continuous improvements. But in reality, this whole system doesn't work unless we build it around people and their activities and their knowledge. So in essence, we're trying to build in through 5S, a self-disciplined workforce, through TPM and efficient um, equipment set, through visual management, transparency, and through standards, a sustainable business process, driven by product that's delivered on time to the right quality, built around your people with an opportunity to continuously improve. That's the whole foundation for the Toyota production system. However, the six steps to lean, as I said, there are a series of enablers, a series of steps that we're trying to achieve to create this, you know, this operational excellence system. So people think the roadmap to lean is quite simple. Start and finish. Okay, it's a nice simple roadmap. But it's a, it's a bumpy roadmap because people are involved, yeah? So it's not one-dimensional. If we look at it in a two-dimensional state, the whole dynamic of it changes. So, and this changes into three then different categories. The first part is this thick, what we call a thick end of the wedge is culture. 
Okay. So how do we drive the culture from, you know, a traditional mindset of not being involved in the business improvements to a lean mindset and a thinking way? So it's, the lean concept is all about thinking. So if you go right the way back to the Toyota tagline, the Toyota production system, their tagline is good thinking, good products. All the tools and techniques shown on this six steps to lean are enablers to make us think differently, to drive the business forward with a different thinking way. So those lean techniques are here, the tools, yeah. So they would be implemented in a certain pattern. So we're building from the bottom up, 5S, TPM, visual management, standards, just in time, et cetera, et cetera. So those implementation of those tools, yeah, along the timeline, shifts the culture and the thinking in a different way. However, once we got to this position that the tools are in place, the culture started to think in a different way, we need to sustain. So our sustain, sustainment methods, you know, are a way of questioning and challenging all the way to ensure that we adapt, you know, and, you know, focus on improving everyday aspects of the business. My, my partner just arrived, Stephen. Hello, all. Okay, so now we're looking at why we've moved forward. So we started to think about, okay, we've got lean methodologies in place. We've got lots of companies out in the world thinking about, you know, improvements. Now, traditionally, that's been driven by consultancy. So in, I think we've all experienced what happened with the pandemic. None of us could really go to work. And that made me think, okay, well, consultancy, do we need to be actually on the shop floor to help a business improve? So I started to develop my thinking way, which to drive it to say, okay, well, can we move into what we call an industry 4.0 mindset? Now, I'm not sure if you all know what industry 4.0 is. Now, I, I originally heard about it many years ago, and I just thought it was a new buzzword to support lean thinking or Six Sigma or, you know, as we move forward. However, industry 4.0 means the, the fourth industrial revolution driven by AI and digital, you know, digital solutions. So I started to adapt my thinking to say, okay, consultancy wise, can we do a blended approach with face-to-face -face consultancy? or can we do a standalone approach via a digital solution? So we started to do the analysis and I thought, okay, well, what would be the difference between consultancy and a digital solution? But in reality, consultancy, very, very expensive. Yeah. So we are talking anywhere between thousand pound a day up to four or 5,000 pound a day, depending on which consultancies you use. The digital solution could be as low as one pound a day per user. Okay. Knowledge transfer. Well, I've, I've worked for many, many years as a consultant out in the field, typically working a four day week, like arriving late on a Monday, leaving early on a Thursday, and generally only working on one shift. So my touch point with the people out on the shop floor is very, very minimal. So the impact across the whole business takes a long time. Digital solution, hmm. it's available 24 seven because it's cloud-based. So let's think about it geographically. I've got consultants and I know many consultants working globally across global organizations. Some of those consultants have been either selected locally or you know traveling from different industry sectors and so on. They all got a knowledge of lean. Some have learned it academically, some have learned, learned it in different company practices, and some have learned it, say, within the Toyota world. So it drives a slight inconsistency in approach and actually frustrates the clients. The digital solution, very standard, very question, um, driven questions, exactly the same everywhere. So we move on to culture change then. So 
if we're taking time to focus on, you know, the individuals by um, using consultancy methods and we're not we're touching small groups sometimes, by the time you transfer through the whole business, the people at the beginning have started to forget, forget their, you know, the knowledge that they've, they've taken from the, um, from the consultants. However, with the digital solution, that stays with them. So the culture change, you know, is fast and wide and sustainable for the long term. And then if we think of the carbon effect of consultancy versus a digital solution, I've traveled the world 20 years, flying every week, in and out, you know, high costs, lots of fuel, fuel being used on aircraft and so on. So it's a big drain on the carbon footprint. The digital solution is, is basically zero, zero carbon, okay? And then total cost, as I said, one simple price. If you think of the consultancy cost of a thousand pound a day, you might as well add on 20% of that on top for the uplift and expenses to get them there and to focus on, on the people. Okay, so that, that drive, drove me to consider, right, what is a digital solution? So in essence, I realized, hmm, every company I've gone to over the last well, 20 years, I've, start, I've standardized my questions. <laughs> so I know every area I go into, and depending on what category I'm focusing on, I ask the same questions. And these questions are, 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 are derived to either drive um, derive to drive an action, yeah, or a solution, or for them to reflect on what's going on for sustainment. So I thought, well, that's simple. I can, I know what the questions are. I've been doing it a long time. So that can easily be put into a digital solution. So that's when we started to focus on where are we? So I'll hand over to Stephen now so he can actually get involved. Thanks, Dave. Ooh. Hello, guys. Are you all back on? Hello. We can hear you, Dave. Hi. Can you hear me? Sorry, the screen got unplugged. So. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, basically, obviously, from what Dave's suggested there. Um, We've realized that obviously consultancy costs are high um, and that makes a reduced market reach, especially in uh, if you think of other industries where um, digital technologies have, have kind of taken over, um, you know, the prices go down, it's more accessible to, to more people um, and more businesses of all sizes. So, um, Obviously, digital solutions in the market space, uh, lean transformation. It's it's well, as Dave would say, probably lower than than uh, expected. Um, obviously, people are starting to push now and digitize um, a lot of their processes. But we've kind of felt now is the time to drive it to industry 4.0. I think one one of the key key aspects of, of this solution. Big companies can afford expensive consultants. There's a massive gap with these, what we call the SME or SMB market, small, medium businesses. They can't all afford a solution or to get that knowledge transferred into their business to help them to either compete or expand. So this is a solution which can either be worked in conjunction with big consultancy or independently for small businesses to help them compete in a, in a very difficult world. Yeah. One thing that Dave point, pointed on then was the inconsistency in, in approach. Um, if you've got various uh, consultants and they all have their own way of, of doing things or they've been trained uh, slightly differently, um, it, it, it just doesn't drive operational efficiency. Um, and I'm, I'm sure Dave's found that a lot on, on sites and uh, I think you've had it a lot where people have kind of come to you and, and because they've had so many different approaches, they've kind of come to you because you are Toyota trained as almost 
the Bible, so to speak. And, yeah, yeah. Lean. Yeah, so, you know, I have, I have a purist approach to it, but however, I'm still open for continuous improvement myself. Over the years, I've adapted my knowledge, you know, with new concepts, which we all need to. Yeah. Uh, one big thing is as well that the improvements are not sustained because the um, there's no data capture, um, which obviously leads to continual review and then continual improvement. Um, so basically, we've seen the opportunity to make uh, operational excellence affordable, consistent, sustainable and transparent. Uh, obviously, through this journey, we've realised that uh, the key for any business in, in succeeding and being agile in, in this, uh, this new world, obviously post-pandemic and um, moving into the Industry 4.0, is to adopt various um, innovations. So obviously uh, gaining technology, but also um, applying creative thinking processes uh, thinking outside the box and, and actually taking a step back and having a look at your industry and seeing how you can drive it forward. And um, obviously sustainability is a, a really big one. Um, and we've found that through implementing our uh, technologies, we can, uh, we, we can reduce the, the impact of uh, our carbon footprint for the client, which is it's obviously on, on all big companies tick lists um, and, and we kind of see that if we can train people in house or, or help our clients train their people in house, then they become more obviously more rounded uh, individuals, but um, also they're not relying on external consultancies that have travel costs, et cetera, et cetera. I think one key aspect you've got to be, um, must understand about lean. Lean is all about waste reduction. Yeah. It's about eliminating all the wasteful activities within your business and focusing on the value add. You know, all so that all drives towards a carbon zero, you know, approach. Yeah. I mean, it is in essence, yeah, a, a sustainability methodology, isn't it? Um, and obviously, we've we've uh, we've adapted to collaborate with people in in different industries and uh, have different partners that we haven't had before. So we're now working with the Manufacturing Technology Centre in the UK, and um, we're working with UKRI uh, and a few others. Which uh, obviously, it's a bit of a sidestep from uh, the, the traditional consultancy. But we're learning that uh, uh, partnering with companies is and, and looking to, to other industries broadens your your approach to, to success basically, um, and and you often you know if you take a step back you can see areas and and um, industries that you wouldn't have seen and and kind of uh, uh, go from there and, and and kind of merge industries and. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of push forward. I think traditionally, obviously, and lean was invented within the automotive sector. Over the years, um, now we've implemented it in the, I think we moved through the aerospace sector, then into um, social housing, into the banking system, into hospitals. It's whenever there's a process, there's an improvement, and the lean innovation system is derived from the Toyota production system. Are having a major impact in all industry sectors across the world. Yeah, I mean, we're finding uh, the, the financial sector is uh, massively adopting lean at the moment, which just goes to show, you know, where uh, big companies such as McKinsey's have, have, have adapted their offering for that sector. Um, and, and that's where, you know, exploring different sectors and, and uh, trying to innovate to, to, to reach different sectors kind of can really give you uh, an advantage in 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 your uh, sector, but also obviously accelerates um, uh, to, to adopt industry 4.0. Right, so this is the part where we introduce uh, our own uh, product, OPEX Digital. 
Uh, now, what we're going to we're going to go through a few uh, examples of the benefits and features that we've found from our own product, just to give you all an idea of applying innovative uh, uh, techniques to create an industry 4.0 solution and the benefits that they have, etc. So, I'll, uh, I'll pass you on to Dave, and he can go through the uh affordability side of things and i think I, we touched this before but you know as i said focused on you know bringing down the total cost of consultancy this can either be you know in rea in reality it can either be as a blended approach with a consultants or it can be a blended approach via zoom or it can be a standalone system within our our solution we've built in a you know a major knowledge transfer option in there so what we'll demonstrate is when i'll show you the app shortly what we'll demonstrate is that the app is you know all consistent about knowledge transfer but we've also built in a lean academy which allows any participants in the app to be certified qualified in lean from lean management and, <coughs> and a lean practitioner so this has all been built in as because i've, I've experienced over the years that i've trained a lot a lot of people across all industry sectors and they never get any certification to say oh yes well, you know I, I, I can add this to my cv and it can enhance my career options so this doesn't happen um, it's normally just i, I attended a, a course but now uh, we've gone to, gone to the efforts with our partner metal training and we've got the courses certified to allow to allow um companies to actually have qualified trainers and implementations and implementation experts and practitioners within their own companies. Yeah, I mean, this is a, a, a really big issue. I mean, especially when during the pandemic, a lot of people have gone to like a, a blended working so, or, or fully um, remote working. I mean, if you can, if you can uh, gain a certification uh, and, and obviously all of your team again in a certification uh, that, that is, I mean, it can't get more standardized than that, really. So they're all trained to the same level and then they can implement that within their daily roles. And it's changing, changing the way that they think, which obviously then changes the culture. Um, and obviously sustainability is a constant, as Dave said, eliminating wastes. It, it, you know, you can't get more... Uh, more lean than that really and, and and regarding transparency because the app is available at all tiers within the business when you're implementing lean across multi-organizations without a digital solution it's difficult to see the progression and as a you know as a ceo or you know managing director or anybody within an organization you're expecting and trusting that the improvement you know cycle is happening on a daily basis now, that can be quite blind, in essence, if you're working across multi facilities, across multi countries. This app gives the seat to log in and look at progression, challenge the process improvements for the benefits of the, you know, the shareholders. So, so that gives us that, you know, that total aspect of are we doing the right things at the right time at the right place with the right support yeah i mean it just goes to prove how important data is i mean you know it, it's still still on some on some massive uh, uh still doing things uh with paper um but how do you know it's followed up correctly with with a, a digital solution, things can be time stamped. It can be clear escalation processes, and uh, you know you, you can be a lot more confident that you're moving in the right way, uh, in a fully transparent way. So some of the features, uh, again, as I say, these are examples from the uh, application that we've used, but. They, they ring true across across lean if adopting uh, uh, industry 4.0 technologies. 
So security, which is a, which is a major one um, as standard. I mean, we have uh, encryption keys, all that kind of jazz. So I guess it's a it's a point to say you know you, you do need to make sure that you you're focusing on the security aspect if you do adopt digital technologies. Um, and we have action tickets within our app, so somebody can can raise an action. And then it can be followed up again, all time stamped. Um, administrators can see who has access and all that kind of stuff, which is all it's perfect because then you've got you've got history, which is which is perfect. You, you can plan ahead, but you've got the history there. Um, and obviously team wide communication. I mean, people are working from all over the world now in teams, as I'm, I'm, I'm sure many of you guys are. But uh, to be able to communicate, we, we allow people to communicate within the app, but also any actions are sent externally. Um, so adopting uh, solutions that can allow you to collaborate within a team remotely is, uh, is, is a great benefit, as I'm sure we've all learned over the, the pandemic. Um, oh yeah, our, our app, basically allows data visualization. So graphs, I mean, we've kind of realized that, that people's attention spans are becoming less and less. And so as, as many visual aids as possible helps, uh, especially um, CEOs and, and uh, uh, higher level members get a quick overview of all the data as, as fast as possible. Uh, and then obviously they can act upon that and, and, and delegate. Um, Help Docs and Lean Academy, Dave's obviously mentioned there. I mean, we offer um, documents that actually help people if they're stuck, but obviously then they can, they can train themselves within Lean and grow as an individual. So we think that that's a, a major thing, especially when adopting Industry 4.0, having help uh, documents and, and and training your people to be at the same standard to to obviously achieve operational excellence but also helping with consistency within work on a day-to-day -day basis and um, create continuous improvement obviously that's the aim of the game uh, consistency again is is a constant especially when you're using an app that can run 24 7 and all your team are completely trained. Uh, an AP, A3 reporting function. So although this application that we've developed is a digital application, it supports uh, you know, going on the site, uh, looking at, at, the, uh, at the state of the business and, and actually physically observing things. And then obviously, uh, reports can be generated which can then be printed off or sent to sent to people so that data transfer is still there it can, yeah it can be used you know as a company handover it can be used as a company report but the function exists all the data is collated into a report so and we can select what what areas or focus we have and we can type in you know comments or you know results yeah. we can select graphs or we can select um, actions or data points, anything we, you know, there's, there's options in there to create a nice functional company report on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Again, that goes back to the whole, you know, quick visualization. So CEOs can see, I don't know, the last few months worth of reports, flick through and visually see with the graphs and whatnot, how, how you know, they're performing at a high level and then it can be delegated. The key, the key to you know robust management is about reacting to the abnormal fast. So all aspects of the A3 reporting function and the visualization and transparency of the digital solution allows us to make fast. Whilst we uh, appreciate that um, digital solutions are the future, uh, we are still people. <laughs> and as people, 
you know, consultancies can adopt this application for use uh, within their job, but also it can be a standalone solution. So there's, when, when thinking about adopting uh, digital technologies uh, to achieve operational excellence, you have to bear in mind that, that you know, people are often the center of, of, uh, of an organization. And as such, you need to plan for that. Okay, guys. So what what I will look at doing now? Just let me stop sharing this. Okay. So hi, guys. Sorry. So yes. Yeah, so what I'll do now? I'll look at giving a, a very brief um, demonstration of the app. Okay. So you can see how it functions. Um, I, won't, I won't go into too much detail, but you'll see the, um, you know, the function of it very simply. Okay, so give me a second. So bear with me a second, I apologize. Apologies for this. It's um, people, people and technology. <laughs> yeah, which again is one of the uh, one of the issues we have. You know, people have to um, have to buy into the technological advances and you know implement them um, for change. That's the biggest problem. Is is changing the culture within any organization, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so can we all see the screen now? Varun, can you hear us? Uh, absolutely, and we can see the screen as well. Uh, is it the full screen, or has it got the pictures and the videos on the absolutely. side? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Cool. Okay, excellent. So, so in, in essence, OPEX Digital. Okay, so let's go so and close this down. Right, so OPEX Digital, okay, is a solution, as we said, which can have multi-owners. So when we say multi-owners, we, you, there's a hierarchy approach, so there's different ownership levels within, within the application. Okay, so you can have, you will have a, a champion who, who sets up the framework, and I'll show you the framework in a moment. You'll have management, supervision, and team leader, and we can rename them accordingly, but however, they, that is, there's different user levels within the app. So certain people can only do certain things because uh, we don't want people going in to other people's areas and changing their results because we know that happens, um, you know, for fun or, you know, or jeopardy, who knows. However, so from this, what we can see here, this is multiple projects that we've set up, okay? Um, this is just a headline view of, of these projects. And you can see that we have the overall um, implementation score, 33% for this example. We can see that we've got nine project users allocated. There's been eight comments raised. There's been 18 escalation points, nine KPIs, live KPIs are, are in place. And there's Kaizen savings been identified of 125,000 pounds. Okay, so that, that's the example. So if you were a, a CEO and you had multi plants, let's say you had 20 plants or whatever, you could actually, you know, view them all in one go and challenge if anybody's not progressing. So in essence, a framework of the business, this would be built by the owner, as, as the allocated owner for your company. So each, each tile we can see here, is, is this would be an exercise at, at the very early stage to say, okay, how are we going to control this? So, you know, this can be blended. We could do this with, on Zoom with the guys to say, okay, well, how do we want this to look? For this example, we've set up an executive team or a steering committee, a prototype department, maintenance department, logistics and warehouse, assembly hall, 
assembly line one, engine marriage, and final assembly line two. So that's like a standard approach to like a very simple car factory. So, but we can see at a glance now that what is the progression of the activities against each one of these departments? And, you know, you could say, okay, well, engine marriage, well, why, why isn't that progressing? And we can, you know, challenge that in, in activity. But if, if we go right the way back to the executive team, executive team here, 49% complete, we can view in, if we, if we enter the, the activity for this, There, excuse me. So if we enter the area, we can see that there's 10, 10 categories that could have been selected for the executive team. So lean project management, safety assessments, lean factory design, all the way through this, this 10, 10 categories, which is detailed focus. However, for this part of this um, company, this Majestic Motors that we've set up, the executive team only wanted to focus on lean project management. So they wanted to establish what is the project, how we, what, how we going to set this project up, what is our goals, what is our ambitions. So if I was attending this company and my first role was to, to align the executive team, I would, I would take them on a journey. My journey would be to ask these questions, yeah? So first and foremost, I'll be saying, okay, what's your blue sky vision? And so have the executive team established a blue sky vision and goals for the project. Then we can score them accordingly to say, and this can be self, self scoring by the way. So it can say, okay, not start to fully completed. Yeah, and there's, there's a key within this help function here to say, okay, where are we on this journey? However, if you don't believe that the question is applicable to you or your organization, just press NA and it takes it out of the calculation. But we can see here that, you know, we've got a communication option in here. It says, emailed over my thoughts to the marketing strategy before, we just need to fine tune it. So somebody's raised a comment in there. Now that can be just for communication or we can create it as an action which then we can allocate a resource to it to make sure that the action is completed. Or if it's an improvement option, which can, we've got a financial saving against it, we can make it as a Kaizen and then we can you know, challenge that accordingly. Okay. However, you, might not, you may not know what lean project management is. So you know, if you're working with consultants, they would probably be advising you and guiding you along the route. As I said, the, the, it's all inclusive. You can see pre-project preparation, project definition. It's very, very detailed. If we were in the green focus on, on, all, on all these questions, you would be, you could probably be 100% sure that you're gonna have a very successful project. However, if you don't really know and you haven't got consultancy support or blended support at hand to help you with the lean project management knowledge, we have a simple help function which is this question mark on the left hand side. We click on the help function and it gives us all these one page support documents to say, okay, what is blue sky and policy employment? What is lean over? What is policy point and access? What is process confirmation, value stream mapping, et cetera. Okay, so, so we have the ability then to actually you know, self-train. Um, we'll open one of these up just as an example. So we start to say, okay, what, what is the information in here that's required? Okay. However, we also have the opportunity. Sorry, it's probably because we're on the Wi-Fi. So probably on the opportunity that you can see in the top right-hand corner that we have Lean Academy also. I mentioned this earlier on. This is the opportunity for us to, to, to um, enter the academy and do certified courses yeah I, I think this kind of highlights the fact that obviously digital implementation is very important but you have to do it right there's no point in having a solution that people don't understand that isn't intuitive if they don't understand the lean way or or whatever the subject is of, of the application that you're implementing people have to be 
able to to learn and to grow whilst using the the solution so that's where the crossover is from you know obviously on the shop floor or or in the offices to using the app you know it's it's got to be transferable so i think we can see there but we're, we're probably at this moment in time we're um, struggling with the wi-fi bandwidth at the moment with our um, not in the videos at the same time so i apologize for that so hopefully it'll catch up in a second um, so I, I think we'll take this opportunity while this while we're having these spinning wheel of death to to then um, take some questions and answers if that's okay You still there, guys, or is it frozen? No, we can hear you. Uh, just wondering if there are any questions, uh, participants. Feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question, switch on your video if you'd like, uh, or you can ask your question on chat as you feel comfortable. Any questions on chat? And only for manufacturing. No, it's uh... no, it's for, it's for all industry sectors. We, we mentioned earlier. Um, this has been reviewed by the National Health Service in the UK, and has been, you know, basically um, authorised for use within the National Health Service through the Advanced Science Network. So it's, it's wherever there's a process, this solution can be used. So the questions in, within the app to challenge and, and make companies think differently. Remember I said it was a thinking way. It's about reflection, it's about you know, driving actions and improvements. The, the questions are generic. Yeah, um, I, I think that's, that's one of the things that we're finding. I think we mentioned earlier, the financial sector's adopting this among many others. And, I think, as Dave said, lean the thinking way is becoming accepted across. I mean, I'm sure in the next 10 years, it will be integral to every business's strategy, um, no matter what, uh, what sector you're in. Uh, there's a question here on the cost. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, obviously, if you can create a digital solution that can be accepted um globally then you bring the cost down to i mean ours right now is a pound per user per day yeah as opposed to a consultant going in which is i don't know what what would you say the cost is of, of a top level well you, you're talking from the boutiques boutique consultancies are a thousand pound a day per consultants up to the mckinsey level you know um probably three, four thousand pounds a day and maybe you, you're getting junior consultants as well at that period. Yeah, so, so it, it's helping uh, businesses of all sizes to, to train internally, but also compete. Uh, I mean, a lot, we know a lot of businesses that, that just cannot compete with uh, tier one companies and of course, then they can't afford the consultancies to, yeah. to, to go with that, which is ironically what they need more than more than most. Well, one of our clients, which is the Manufacturing Technology Centre of the UK, which is a government body, their ambition is to improve the first tier, second tier um, businesses within the automotive, aerospace, nuclear you know, environments. They, they've adopted this to say, OK, well, yeah, this allows us to... to they, they, they are very, um, say, thin on the ground with their support and consultancy. So they're saying, well, this can actually allow us to spread more evenly and get more consistent results across um, their organizations. There, there are a couple of other questions as well, uh, Dave and Steve. Let's scroll down. Sorry, let me see. Give me a second. So I think um, Luther is interested to know what the cost is to use the app. And then Samir is asking if it can be applied to the construction industry. 
Yes, so lean is big in the construction industry. It's any, as I said earlier on, it's anywhere where there's a where there's a process, you know, we need to control. So for via project management through transparency, you know, the, any aspect where we need to standardize an operation where you know within construction that you've got to be consistent in the approach, you've got to make sure and um, processes are followed specifically for health and safety. But if, if, if people are cutting corners, we need to be able to react fast to these failures. And this tool drives that way of thinking that we police it every way. And it actually has an escalation function within it to say and chat to challenge what we see. I didn't show you the full functionality um, of the app at that point, but we can also always arrange you know, a private demo with anybody. Um, but within the app, there's escalation routes, there's performance KPIs, you know, there's um, there's actually internal communal communication emails within the app, but also sends it directly to your personal email as well. So that communication loops all controlled directly from inside the app. But on the cost side, as I mentioned before, you know, we are charging. There's obviously there'd be a minimal amount, but there'd be a pound a day per user. So we'd be looking at a minimum fifty users across an organisation to make it viable. Um, and then obviously scalable from that point will it will be discounted depending on that, you know how many we go forward um, and, and this can all be discussed you know going forward but in summary we're looking to support the Middle East in your growth and growth strategy you know and uh, you know and productivity but we're also looking for any partners out there who are looking to support getting this message out there and you know helping us to um, basically supply it to industry sectors throughout the world. So if anybody wants to embrace the opportunity to, you know, within your network to say, okay, well, let's push it out there. There's, there's an option to work alongside us to get that solution pushed out to the world. Yeah. Um, sorry, just going back to the construction uh, side of things, the, the question we received before, we're actually running it, uh, running the, our app on a construction project right now which is within a large uh, packaging plant. Uh, and we found that uh, health and safety issues have, have arose from, from using the app and, and being actioned, but also um, things like we implemented a, a, a digital live Gantt chart for the, for the project because they were literally printing out Gantt charts giving the progress every now and again. And even the small things have allowed the management team to follow the, the project live, even though they're working remotely. Um, as I'm sure, you, you know, budgets need to be followed and things need to be tracked. And, and, and we're finding a lot, of, uh, a lot of solutions for the project with, just through using the app. So, yeah. you know, it, it, it does change the, the the methodology, the thinking way, and, and it, it moves things forward. I can see a question there regarding third party suppliers and service providers too. So as an example, we've been working with a large um, truck manufacturer in Europe, and their procurement office uses this to, um, to actually monitor control of suppliers in different levels, you know, supplying their main area. So because instead of sending out their supplier engineers to, to monitor control, they can they control them through the transparency and visualization of the app. So they can see at a glance, okay, where are we at? What are the solutions? Escalation and communication through the app without sending out, you know, service engineers or support engineers. Um, there's a good question here, Dave. Um... Who are you competing with and how can you define your differentiation factors? So we've reviewed competitors. So we're, within big in this, within big consultancy, um, McKinsey's have a solution called OPEX Index. Um, this is only a solution to give a maturity assessment of your business. This is to drive in consultant and um, expensive face-to-face -face consultancy. So we've taken it to a, a next level to say, okay, well, you know, we're not competing with them. We're offering a standalone solution, which our, our solution does the maturity assessment, but also gives you the solution to implement it yourself 
or with blended supports. Yeah. Um, we've seen lots and lots of lean app applications out there, but they tend to be for um, visual displays and dashboards, not for actually driving a solution or a thinking way. Nobody's put the level of content uh, and consultancy thinking to support a company with, into an app at this moment in time. So we are at the forefront of this. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, we've either noticed, as Dave said there, it, it's purely been dashboard dashboard functionality. So more to organise your your team and assets, not not to gather data and drive uh, continuous improvement. And knowledge transfer. Or, or it's been consultants using apps, as Dave said, to literally drive in the consultants. And because we could have been, say, quite blinkered in our focus because we're too deep into the app, we engaged with a company called Inventure, which is another consultancy and um, part of the Innovate UK transformation programme. Um, and they did the investigation for us on our competitor analysis, and they didn't find anybody doing this either. So... Anymore? I don't. I don't know if uh, you got my message. I was just asking if we can have a conversation over the mic or not. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Uh, so what I'd like to do before that, Omar, just before everyone leaves, because we are on the hour. Um, those of you who are still around, I'd like to take a quick photo if that's okay with you. But you need to turn on your cameras if you're comfortable with that, and uh, uh, just for social media, and then. Uh, of course, Omar can, uh, uh, you know, talk to Dave and uh, Steve. Okay, perfect. Come on, let's see your smiley oh. faces. <laughs> Everybody say cheese. <laughs> perfect. Super. I've got a, a photo. And then, of course, uh, feel free to, uh, I'll get one more with Samir in it and then. Perfect. Thanks, everyone, uh, sort of who needs to leave, given that uh, we're on the hour. But uh, uh, Omar, I'm sure uh, Dave can answer a few questions before uh, before they leave. No problem whatsoever. Well, I, I have to con uh, to, uh, to congratulate Consolidon for the consistency and, uh, and the content that you guys are sharing uh, over the emails and subscribing. There's always value there. I also have to salute the team uh, uh, for for the demonstration today. Uh, on a side note, and in a friendly, very friendly way, I would like I'd like to have more energy while you present. So, but but I assume that that such presentations are very core and technical, yeah, so they right. would require some some sort of uh, uh, more uh, more formality here. Uh, uh, as innovators, Skate, I would like to allow me to introduce. Uh, what we do. We do promote startup innovations for the B2B sectors worldwide. Globally, we have a, a global outreach team, and this is what we do on a daily basis. So we definitely like to discuss that uh, further in a later stage. Uh, on top of that, uh, there's some sort of uh, youth uh, indulgence in the process. So whenever we're digitizing any process, we have to consider that those 20 years old, 22, 25 years old, uh, new joiners and, and, and businesses and companies are going to be part of the users. Uh, so it would it would really relate when we um, uh, consider those as part of your segment, or, you know, and the user experience at, at that level. And I would love to uh, recommend that the process be uh, from the, in, the initiation of a project towards the, the final the, the, the end results of it so that the user can better understand or the customer better understand that the value that you're offering i'm 100 percent sure given your expertise that this is the right solution to consider for companies right but uh, i wasn't able to uh, to read uh, through the presentation but i was able to read through your profiles and through the vast understanding that you possess and what you're doing uh, we are uh, happy to to connect uh, definitely we'll speak to Baron about that and see how to further collaborate and also include you in our uh, uh, events calendar uh, for our upcoming events we just thought, uh, held this conference 3 weeks ago we included uh, all the top uh, 15 technologies 
uh, and uh, over 28 industries spoke at the conference, good investors and business uh, professionals. I'm going to be opening the uh, opportunity here to connect with everybody and we we'll look forward to have a demo directly with the Innovators Gates team so that we see how we can collaborate. Uh, I'm glad for this opportunity. Uh, I also had my, my teammate here, my team member, uh, Rain, with us. Um, we thank you so much for that. Uh, Varun, we're going to be definitely staying uh, tuned for all the updates. Thank you. Thank you, gents. Thank you very much. Much appreciated and your positive feedback and, you know, and, and learning opportunities as well. Um, we, we, we had engaged with um, one of our, our partners to get the, um, the benefits realisation um, sketch more directed. However, um, we're running late on that information. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. and, I mean, uh, I, uh, we, do, we all definitely understand yeah. uh, the process of innovation. And when you're introducing something new to the world, there's kind of a little bit of friction in the beginning. And this yeah. is definitely understandable to all of us. We look forward to help facilitate that process too, uh, together. Thank you so much for your time. Thank I'm, you, I'm going to be after leaving everybody for, for, for the break uh, from the meeting. Thank you so much, Dave. Okay. Uh, I, I tried to connect with LinkedIn, but your partner, your name is not showing, so I couldn't memorize it. Sorry, oh, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen. Stephen. Uh, uh, yeah. If you can share the LinkedIn profile or, or we connect through date. Anyways, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Okay. So any more from anybody else? No, I think we'll find that's concluded then. So thanks everybody for attending. We really appreciate it. Um, there's no more questions, is there? Um, Okay, no, so thanks, thanks everybody, really appreciate it, and, um, and good luck, and hopefully we'll be in touch shortly. Thank you. Thank you.